Hey, what is going on, my guys? So much has been happening. But for those of you who don't already know and haven't already seen, I just dropped a free, 100% free sample pack. And I also have a beat making contest where the winner is going to win a $100 cash prize, early access to kits, all the information that is going to be on my IG. The link is going to be in the description below. But let's get back to the video topic of today, which is Wonder Girl. Listen, man, Wonder Girl is a beast. For those of you who haven't already heard some of the samples, I'm going to skim through some of the samples, show you which one I used. I'm going to go ahead and show you the beat, show you how I made it and why I did certain things. And with that being said, let's go straight into FL Studio. Let me just skim through so you guys can get a feeling of what this pack sounds like. Alright guys, so the sample that I use is called Succubus, and this is what it sounds like originally. Now this sample has three parts. We have the beginning, we have a section that has a sub bass in it. And then we also have a part over here that has some gross beat presets going on. Wow. That's pretty... That, that, that's pretty cool. Alright guys, so let me go ahead and show you these drums. And then I'm going to show you the mixing after that. And then the arrangement. So, first thing I started off with, <clears throat> I picked the hardest snare that I can get. And then as you saw, we have a slight little delay of the snares right there. I added this live hi-hat just to give some emphasis on the kick, and you'll see what I'm talking about later. Right after that, I added this one to add some emphasis on the second snare. And right after that, I added this very simple but consistent hi-hat roll that I pretty much just dropped off the volume just to give it some more bounce. And now we're ready for the hi-hats. Now I wanted something kind of busy, but not too distracting. So this is where a lot of the energy comes in. We have high rolls, we have low rolls, we have some notes that are panning left and right. I'm just gonna go ahead and play this so you guys can hear it. Now with the rest of the drums, here's what that sounds like. Now, obviously, it wouldn't be a Wonder Girl drum pattern if the hi-hats didn't have some shift on it. This is one thing that Wonder Girl does a lot. It's a very, very simple thing, but it adds a whole another level of bounce to it. Instead of having her hi-hats hit right on grid, now you can go ahead and do that by grabbing all of the, uh, the hi-hats and just delaying them like this. Obviously, that's a little bit too much. What you would do is actually take the magnet and put it on none and just shift it over just a little bit but all you have to do is go into the miscellaneous functions and then turn up this shift knob like that so let's go ahead and add the kick in here now as you guys can see we already have a bounce established all right now let's get into the 808 this is everybody's favorite part I definitely wanted to have some glides in there, but I did not want to go too crazy. I didn't want to have hard left, hard right pants coming in. I'm going to go ahead and play this and then talk about why I chose some of the slides that I did. So right in the beginning, we have this very slow, long glide. And then we go into a very simple 808 pattern. And then we slide back down. And the reason why I went with this sort of slide is because we already have a lot going on with the hi-hats and the snare. So I wanted the initial couple of seconds of the pattern to have some impact, but I didn't want too many 808 notes going on at the same time. So when we add all of that together, we have the 808, we have the kicks, we have the snares, we have the hi-hats. This is what it all sounds like. Now, 
Now for the sample, I chose uh, part C, which is the part that had the Grosby preset for the hook, just because I felt like it had uh, the most motion. I felt like it had the most energy to it. So with everything together, here's what the drums sound like with the sample. Back to the first hi-hat and the kick. This is something that I like to do personally. I usually like to add some sort of open hat right in the beginning of the pattern. Here's what the kick and 808 sound like without that first hi-hat. Now with that hi-hat, here's what it sounds like. It just adds that much more energy to that first initial transient. Okay, now that we have the drums out the way, let's go ahead and talk about the mixing. The mixing is honestly, I didn't do too much. As you guys can see by these mixers, there's almost nothing on here besides some parametric EQ, just dipping out some of the very, very low and the very, very high end, and then a simple side chain from the kick to the 808. That just allows the kick to punch through just a little bit more. And that just goes to show you, if you have clean drum sounds, you don't have to go crazy with the EQ and you don't have to go crazy with the mixing. Now let's get into the arrangement. Now for the intro, I have the A part of the sample playing. I have a portal that kind of fades out that adds this very weird kind of warped effect to the sample. I have this riser here. And then I also have this riser here at the same time. So let me show you what the portal is actually doing to the sample. The preset is called Time Traveler, and as you guys can see, it's slowing it down, it's changing the pitch, it's panning it left and right. It's doing a whole bunch of things. Shout out to Jack, because he's one of the first dudes I've seen use this. This little VST plugin can do a lot of weird things to your samples. So I'm gonna show you what it did, and I'm gonna show you how the intro sounded. And that's the intro right there. Very short, very weird intro. I feel like that's a very Wonder Girl-ish kind of intro. I think she would do something like that. Right after that, we just have the hook that comes in. And then right after that, we have this part with the sub bass. And then we switch over to this part right here. So, so for this part right here, all I did was pitch the sample up an octave and then took an audio recording of the drums through Edison and slowed them down by half the speed. Added a little snare chop right here. Added the same little riser from the intro. And then I went in and added this long synth called Cascade Flanger and just changed the uh, velocity so that it comes in a little smoother. And that just gave this little section some more energy and suspense so that the drums can have that much more impact. Same thing for this breakdown. Instead of an octave up, we have it an octave down. We have the slowed down drums. I have this kind of little, uh, I'm not sure what to call it, this little perk, a lot of reverb at the end of it to replace the snare. And then we have an automation of Valhalla verb just to give this some weird little spacey vibe that'll lead back into the drums again. And then right after this beat breakdown, we have a part at the end of the beat where it slows down one more time. And I used half time, changed the loop to four bars and changed the mode to 1.5. Ending of this beat sounds like this. <laughs> Hey, 
and that is pretty much it thank you guys for watching remember guys it's about like 12 more days for this contest so you guys have a lot more time to really finish and make this beat as impressive as you possibly can and with that being said if you made it this far in the video and you haven't already subscribed what are you waiting for go ahead and click that red button down below hit the notification bell i'm telling you bro i'm telling you if you don't hit it now you're gonna hit it later so you might as well hit it right now i'll probably see you guys tomorrow i'm gonna try to upload again thank you guys for watching thank you guys for giving me your time and i'm out of here thank you